So welcome to the National Sustainability Teachers Academy online video units. Um, these are uh, units that introduce sustainability topics for teachers who are attending our national and regional workshops. Today we're going to talk about what is sustainability. I'm Rob and with me today are two student workers at the Sustainability Teachers Academy. Um, hi, my name is Julia. And my name is Julia. So uh, Julia and Julia are going to help have a discussion about uh, sustainability and introduce this topic to you. What I want to talk about first is um, I want to ask this simple question. We ask this of teachers uh, every time that we do workshops and that's what sustainable actions do you take in your everyday life? So guys, what do you think? What, what are the things that you do that are sustainable? Um, of course, I love recycling and um, I actually recycle soft plastics in my apartment too and I turn off the lights whenever I leave a room. So like soft plastics, those are what? Like, like like candy wrappers or like I really like fruit snacks and so they're the fruit snack wrappers and we have a, like a recycling place for it in our office so I do that. Yeah. And I try to recycle everything. I take it to the blue bin in my apartment. I also compost and take my compost to uh, school gardens. Nice. So you guys are doing the sustainable actions, trying to make a difference uh, for your communities. One of the things that I try to do, I also compost. We, we use in my house a compost service. So they, everything that's organic goes into a bucket, and then they pick up the bucket once a week and compost it. Uh, and I think they use the, the compost they produce for community gardens in mm -hmm. the neighborhood. Yeah. And I think that's pretty typical. Like Most people do this kind of thing. So when we ask teachers what they do that is sustainable, uh, what actions they take in their lives, um, we usually get very similar answers. So I've actually created a word cloud in the shape of the United States to show what teachers across the country are doing uh, that is sustainable. And you can see a lot of it has to do with recycling, electricity, uh, water uh, use, gardens. A lot of people are trying to support local foods, but you can see lots of composting, lots of recycle, a lot of focusing on waste. So what do you think? Is that sufficient? Is that everything that there is about sustainability? Um, I think that it's a lot of things about sustainability, but I think there are some more actions you can take that tackle some some different kinds of problems that we'll talk a little bit about later. But um, something that I do that I think is not on this list is I try to buy secondhand clothes um, since there's this whole industry kind of behind the fashion, or the, this whole um, kind of waste issue behind the fashion industry. Um, what about you, Julia? Yeah, I think they focus a lot on recycling and the water and everything. Something else I do and I have done since I I was working in kitchens, I try to do less food waste, so I try to use all the trimmings and do cook other things with them. So you guys focus on eliminating waste in different parts of the system, so not just what you're using in your home, but also like further upstream, so how it's being produced in restaurants or how it's being produced in, in clothing. That's cool. What I think, too, uh, we need to consider are all of these other issues that we may have on our radar that have a sustainability context that most people don't think about when they're making their choices. And so we've got a few examples. Like, uh, for example, you might have uh, seen on the news in the past few years um, loss of sea ice in the Arctic. Um, so that's a major environmental problem that uh, could be associated with sustainability. Okay, another sustainability problem would be how we feed population. We have a, mostly of our food here in the United States, 40% of our food uh, production is wasted. Instead, in other countries, they are missing that food. So another sustainability problem is how do we have less food waste here in the United States or, or in other countries like United States, and how do we feed other places in the world where they are they don't have sufficient food where they don't have food or n sufficient nutrients so a sustainability problem that i think people often don't think is a sustainability problem is how climate change and especially warming temperatures are influencing the spread of diseases around the world so zika is an example of this where it's carried by mosquitoes um, and so whenever the temperatures rise, mosquitoes don't have as much of a dormant period as they usually do. So then they're alive for longer periods and then that means they reproduce more. And so then there's more mosquitoes carrying these um, diseases. And so it's spreading around the world now in places that usually don't have these warmer temperatures. And so 
higher and higher populations of people are being affected, which means that more children and more mothers and more families are being impacted by these types of diseases. Air quality is another concern. So as we um, rely on greater and greater production of electricity or greater and greater transportation through cities, we actually impact air quality. So another problem that we face in the United States is that we have a lot of obesity and overweight people, and most people will think these people are healthy or overly eating, so they must be healthy. However, they are feeding themselves with nutrient-low foods, so they are still eating foods and a lot of calories. However, they don't have a, de a high density of, of nutrients, so they're still starving themselves, even though they are obese. Uh, plastics are another problem, uh, so global plastic production and deposits of plastics in otherwise clean environments. Um, virtually any place that you go in, in the world right now, you can find evidence of humans in uh, just the plastic debris that's everywhere. There's been an increase of conflict um, around the world, kind of, which is sometimes linked to climate change, and so these uh, result in security issues and so places aren't as safe as they used to be and so this photo is a picture of a boy trying to walk to school in a neighborhood that probably isn't very safe and so that's affecting his access to education and his access to health and his access to feeling safe in in his community um, and so that's another problem that we're facing that's linked to sustainability. And finally, we face global challenges regarding biodiversity. So this image shows us the difference in coral reef health over the course of a few years. On the left side, you have a vibrant, thriving reef with lots of biodiversity. Over the course of a few years, that, that reef has died off, um, the coral have died, and then the organisms that uh, rely on them in that ecosystem have disappeared. And that's a huge problem uh, globally. So we have all of these different problems that I think need to be tied up together in our understanding of sustainability. So over the next few slides, what we'll do is try to explain how sustainability ties all these problems together and how we can uh, start to see them through the lens of sustainability. So we are going to introduce a few definitions of sustainability that are uh, commonly used and also show a few different models that you can use to represent sustainability problems uh, with students. So uh, this definition of sustainability is something that is used pretty commonly in the sustainability world and it is sustainability means meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability to meet future needs. And so this was developed in 1987 during the World Commission on Environment and Development um, and it's sometimes called the Brundtland Report and so people call it the Brundtland Definition and so it's centered on um, so meeting the needs of the present which means it's still sustaining ourselves now, making sure that people have access to um, healthy food and the environment is taken care of um, and a variety of other things that we'll talk about later. So keeping those, making sure those things are happening now and then also making sure that future generations have access to these same types of things. So it's this a kind of a new definition that's focused on future generations, which is something that's not often discussed in um, kind of typical environmental problems. And so we'll talk about that more throughout the presentation and how to tackle those problems with this type of definition. So think about human needs for a little bit. And when you are talking about sustainability, um, how does that relate to human needs? So the basic needs of humans fall in these three categories. We have environment, society, and economy. Most of you think of sustainability about environment. So some of these examples are clean air, having clean water, having a healthy soil to grow nutritious food. Um, in society, we think about safety, health, uh, good community, and good education. And in economy, we think about having a good job, fair wages, fair prices of, of food or goods, and opportunity. And so what we like to say is that sustainability rests on these three pillars. If you are missing one of these three pillars, then that whole sustainability architecture is going to fall apart. So sustainability really means promoting environmental health, social well-being, and economic development at the same time. So a lot of problems in sustainability occur when you have environmental, societal, or economic problems all at once, or sometimes a problem may fall into one of the categories more than the other, ca other categories. But 
they all kind of rest on these pillars together. And so you can't really address the problem without addressing all three of them. And, and think about what it means to promote a, a potential solution to a sustainability problem. It means that you can't just go and uh, try to address clean water at the expense of you know, at, a, at the expense of jobs, for example. You can't go and, and promote community health uh, at the expense of environmental considerations. And what we're often most uh, familiar with are economic opportunities, like industries that, that build great products or are highly profitable that have negative downstream effects in the environment and our society. So as a sustainability scientist, um, you have to think about all three of these pillars uh, as you're going forward trying to make things better, trying to improve conditions. So in this diagram, it's when we see if we have a good environment, a good economy, and a good society, they all overlap and we have sustainability. So this is another way to envision the three pillars, and on the outer circle is natural systems, which is comprised of the environment, resources, and things that you'd use in nature. And then the next circle is society, which is people, governance, um, any kind of institutions developed by humans. And so that circle is within this natural system circle because we exist in the environment and we use those resources to um, live and work and eat and um, help ourselves survive. And then the economy circle is in the center because humans developed the economy and that is uh, comprised of trade, goods, services, those types of things. And those things are usually uh, tools or materials that are made from the environment. So the circles are nested together because they're all interlinked. I particularly like this model of sustainability because it shows us how we can properly prioritize our uh, environment, society, and economy. Oftentimes we put making money and having a thriving economy ahead of our social systems and our environmental systems, and that can be a real problem because as our use of the natural systems expands, our, our society circle gets bigger. And at the same time, the resources that are available in our natural systems contracts. And so at a certain point, we're going to start to see um, human social and economic systems butting up against the available natural resources. And that means that we can experience scarcity, environmental degradation, and we can start to, to uh, see some real problems develop from, uh, from that interaction. What we want to see is that we promote things like environmental health and social health. Uh, we prioritize those things before we start to prioritize uh, economic uh, growth. Economic growth kind of takes over everything right now. We want to bring natural systems and social systems back into the picture when we think about sustainability. So on that same note, this quote from Charles Redman, who's the founding director of the ASU School of Sustainability, um, encompasses what Roberts is talking about. So sustainability is an awareness of the connectivity of the world of the world and the implications of our actions. So whenever we're discussing sustainability, you really do have to think about those three pillars and then wonder, well, if I'm if this thing is happening, how is it affecting the environment, society, and economy? Is is it affecting one more than the other? And kind of what are the future implications of this thing? And keeping in mind that everything is really connected, so actions do matter, big actions, small actions, they all need to be taken into consideration so then we can make better decisions for present generations and future generations. We're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about how uh, to promote sustainability in the classroom. And this is a sort of tricky topic because when we're talking about promoting sustainability, we're actually talking about changing people's behaviors and promoting new behaviors that make have an impact in, in making things more sustainable. So that may involve a few new approaches to education that uh, you may not already include in your typical classroom. So at its heart, sustainability is about identifying complex problems and then solving them. Sustainability problems are urgent, complex, and interrelated and re require a systems approach. There are no simple solutions. We have the social, cultural causes, the economic causes, and environmental causes that are all contributing and interrelated into the central problem. As a high school teacher, I found that the typical approach to promoting behavior change with students don't really work the way that I expected. So if I wanted to graph my typical approach to uh, promoting sustainability in the classroom over time, what I would say is that we would do an analysis of 
the conditions of sustainability now, and those conditions indicated that sustainability was, was low. And then over the course of a couple of classes, we'd have a desired future. We'd think, oh, we want to have zero waste on campus, for example. And unfortunately, what I do in the classroom then was not always conducive to reaching that desired future. So I would do the typical things, like have a boring lecture on climate change, assign a re written report to students on how plastic kills sea turtles, and maybe we'd watch a video on municipal solid waste, and then I'd make them do some math and calculate how much pollution they create by failing to carpool. And the result was really frustrating and paradoxical to me because in my mind, I was giving them all this great information about how to be sustainable, and what I found in my students was that they were less and less enthusiastic about actually promoting sustainability or doing sustainable things. And at the end of the year, I asked them to uh, collect or to create some memes that they felt encapsulated what I was teaching in the class, and this was the result. Not very enthusiastic support for sustainability. And in fact, eventually my class became known as the course about soil and don't have children because they're just going to starve to death. And so this is a problem because a lot of what we think about in terms of behavior change rests on this old model where we're going to start with knowledge. We just give people knowledge, then they become aware of the problem, and then that promotes them to change behavior, and then voila, the problem is fixed. But we actually need a new model. So real effective change actually requires a lot of different things to happen. So rather than just having those boring lectures on climate change or making students write reports about things and calculate um, how much they, more they need to do to be sustainable, instead we need to do those scientific evaluations but then also identify barriers to why that change isn't happening or why people are still making these decisions and then figure out how to create opportunities for your students and for other people to then make change and make those good decisions that will contribute to sustainability and then you can't a lot of the times continue to make change on a large scale if people aren't collaborating so teaching your students the value of collaborating with one another and people in their community um, and then that will incentivize more behavior change on a larger scale and then hopefully engage with your community on a larger scale as well so that's how change can start in your classroom and then be continued on into your community and then hopefully into kind of larger areas and then hopefully the world. <laughs> So student engagement looks something like this. When you go outside and actually do something, do some research, look at real things, what I like the most is in this example, it's a school garden, and these students actually go outside, look at the plants, see how they're growing. So as they see how this seed started growing into a plant they in this time they see how their community reached to their school they worked uh, they collaborated with other people outside of their school but in their community they had they improved the school's health they had classes outside so that it's also an improvement in the students uh, grades and actual well-being in the image on the right is a girl who's holding a baby box turtle, and this is part of a student-led project where they're interested in conserving habitat and conserving populations of these box turtles in order to get adults to think about the importance of habitat and the importance of species like box turtles. Uh, you, you actually have to have those adults uh, remember experiences that they have as children. Um, they need to value the habitat, for example. They need to value the species that, that you're concerned with. And when you reach out with chil to children in this way and engage them in this way, it actually makes these lifelong memories that they, that they can think back on as adults and, and that informs the decisions that they, uh, that they make as adults. So instead of just sustainability as a series of boring lectures and activities that depress people about how terrible things mm -hmm. are, when you incorporate action into your lesson plans about sustainability, then you get better results. So we can still start out with now and things are not as sustainable as we'd like. We still have a desired future, but then we put together activities that, that direct us toward that desired future. Things like measuring food waste in the cafeteria, meeting with cafeteria and facilities staff to talk about the problems and potential solutions to that food waste developing a plan to compost uneaten food, and then training teachers and students to do that composting. Those are the things that actually get us to our sustainable solutions. It's not just going to be about you know, doing a boring lecture or watching a video. 
we're going to ask teachers in our academies to actually participate in uh, developing projects that drive their communities toward these desired sustainable futures. Um, so a better approach to sustainability would be focused on solutions and not problems, which can be really inspiring to your students. It encourages behavior change, so rather than just talking about a problem, actually doing something about it in your own life. It promotes prosociality, which is um, kind of can increase your community well-being, increase uh, friendships and relationships in your school so people can learn how to work better together. And it empowers your students to take action not only in school but outside of school and develops those skills and values um, and actions that they'll carry th with them throughout their lives. And the whole idea is to make sustainability about changing and improving conditions for your school and for your community. And it gives people hope. It gives them, it inspires them to uh, take action, like Julia said, and it makes your curriculum a lot more relevant and engaging. So that brings us to the end of this presentation. We hope you've learned what the definition of sustainability is and have a couple of new ways to look at sustainability in your classroom and in your schools. And we hope that you've learned that uh, it's important to uh, promote behavior change and take action when you are learning about and promoting sustainability with your students. We also hope to give you an encouragement of learning more about this topic and doing more at your school. Thank you and we'll see you next time.